Welcome back to the GSMC Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We're going to go into our second segment here today, but before we do that, I'd like to ask you again to please like and follow the show. We do get a number of questions from viewers, so to ensure that your question does get read in the air, please use the link gsmcpodcast.net. It really does help the show, and it really does mean a lot, so thank you so much for that. And let's get into our second segment of the day. All right, so we just recapped the AL games of yesterday, so it's only fitting we do the NL. So, um, yeah, let's get straight into it. So, first game we'll be talking about is a really exciting one, again, with the Mets and Braves. Like I said, whenever these two teams meet, it seems to be really, really exciting. So, yeah, definitely interested to talk about this one. In the bottom of the first, Ozzy Albies would hit a RBI double to give Atlanta the lead 1-0. In the bottom of the third, Austin Riley would hit a RBI single to make it 2-0. Matt Olson would hit a RBI single to make it 3-0. And Marcelo Zuna would do the same as the two before him, making it 4-0, all in the bottom of the third. Adrian Hauser, the Mets starting pitcher, would give up six straight singles, so... Yeah, was getting was getting uh, nipped in the butt by uh, some soft hit singles. So. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. Bottom of the fourth, Austin Riley would hit a guess what? You guessed it, RBI single to make it five nothing Atlanta. Man, the Mets can not have a catch a break with these RBI singles. Bottom of the sixth, Ozzy Albies would hit a RBI ground out to make it six nothing. So looked like Atlanta had the game in the driver's seat in the bottom of the sixth. Going into the eighth, they were still up six nothing, but the Mets would say no, 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 and come back. Pete Alonso would hit a three-run home run, making it 6-3. to three. So nice job by Alonso there to get the Mets on the board and get them suddenly back into the game. Omar Narvaez would hit an RBI double in the top of the ninth to score Harrison Bader, making it 6-4. to four. And Starling Marte would hit an RBI ground out to make it 6-5 to five with two outs now. So the Mets had one chance up to bat, and they would unfortunately hit a fly out. So they came back at the end 6-5 to five against a really strong Braves team. So... I mean, yes, they did lose, but it's really encouraging for how the season's going so far, and a really nice fake comeback, you could say, but still a nice job by them. The, they had Adrian Hauser on the mound, who went five innings pitched, eight hits, five run runs, two walks, and a strikeout. Only one strikeout somehow, so the start definitely could have been worse, though. He gave up a lot of singles, as I said. He was playing a really great Braves offense, so yeah, definitely not great, and not what you want to see, but could have been a lot worse. For the Braves, they had Reynaldo Lopez going. Six innings pitched, three hits, no one runs, three walks, six strikeouts. So it turns out the experiment of making him a relief pitcher and making him starting pitcher from a relief pitcher right now is working out pretty well. So, I mean, hey, the the Braves know what they're doing. That's all I'll say. Next game we are talking about is going to be the Brewers and Reds, a NL Central matchup here. Top of the third, Blake Perkins would hit a RBI single to make it 2-0 Brewers in the to start scoring off early. Same innings, Christian Yelich would single in Blake Perkins to make it 3-0. Bottom of the fourth, Cincinnati would get their first run on the board with a RBI single by Jake Fraley to score at Christian Encarnacion Strand. Then Christian Yelich would hit another RBI, RBI to get an RBI double to score Blake Perkins and William Contreras to make it 5-1 Milwaukee. Blake Perkins himself would hit an RBI single to make it 6-1. And then Jake Bowers with an RBI double to make it 8-1. to one. Sal Freelick would hit a RBI single to make it 9-1. to one. And as you can see, the Brewers would be in the driver's seat of this game. But the Reds would start to come back a tiny bit in the bottom of the seventh now. Tyler Stevenson would hit a RBI double to make it 9-3. to three. L.A. De La Cruz would ground out to make it 9-4. to four. And Spencer Sear would hit an RBI double to make it 9-5, to five, scoring Jake Fraley. Now, unfortunately, they would not be able to score in the ninth as they would end up losing this game to their division rival Brewers, 9-5. to five. But still a nice job to come back a little bit, I guess. But the Brewers have been off to a really nice start. I mean, 7-3, and three, nothing to sneeze at. So, yeah, it's definitely been strong. So, I mean, really not much to, uh, to you know, judge here. So, uh, yeah. For the um, for the Reds, they had Frankie Montas on the mound. Five innings pitched, six hits, five runs, three earned, one walk, four strikeouts. So an okay start by him, not the best. For the Brewers, they did have Joe Ross on the mound, going six and a third, five hits, two runs, three runs, two earned. So a pretty nice start by Joe Ross. I mean, this Cincinnati offense is nothing to uh, you know cough at. So definitely a nice a nice start there. So, nice job by the Brewers to defeat their division rival, and just an overall nice game in general. Next, we are going to be talking about the Dodgers-Twins game. A really nice game here. Um, I mean, it's really exciting. So, yeah, um, 
really two just really good teams in the Dodgers and Twins. So let's get straight into it. Starting off in the top of the fourth, we had James Outman hitting a three-run home run to make a 3 nothing Dodgers. So a really nice start by him to start off the game for the Dodgers as well. Will Smith, the newly extended catcher, would hit a three-run home run himself to make it 6 nothing. So three-run home runs in back-to-back innings. But you can't count out the Twins just yet. In the bottom of the eighth, Ryan Jeffers would hit a solo home run to make it 6-1. to one. And Carlos Correa would do the same, making it 6-2. to two. And Alex Kirilov would do the same to make it 6-3. to three. Those were both in the bottom of the ninth, but they would unfortunately not score after that, and they would make it would be 6-3. to three. So Twins have not been off to a great start so far, 3-6. and six. I think some of the other central teams have been off to a better start than them. But, you know, you can't really count them out yet. I still think they're going to win that division. I still think they're a great team, and we'll see what happens there. They had Louis Varlin on the mound, five innings pitch, seven hits, six earned runs, three three walks, six strikeouts, nine ERA in the season. Not a good start by Varlin. I mean, he's playing the Dodgers, so it's kind of what you expect, but still, you definitely want something better than that. For the Dodgers, they had superstar Tyler Glasnow on the mound, who was absolutely phenomenal, one of the best starts of the season so far. Seven innings pitched, three hits, no one runs, no walks, 14 strikeouts, a 2-2-5 era in the season. I mean, Glasnow has been absolutely incredible. Just honestly amazing. I mean, there's a lot of question marks I had, especially about this trade when they acquired him from the Rays. I mean, he's had a lot of pitch. He's on a lot of injuries over his career. But, hey, he's t- turned all those naysayers into dust right now. He's been so, so good. And he's been pitching like this, especially against a really good team like the Twins, that there's going to be a lot less people. Uh, giving him flack for his injuries in the past. So, yeah, a really, really strong start there. Next game we're going to be talking about is going to be Cardinals-Phillies, a matchup of the red team, a matchup of two Reds teams, two red teams, I should say. Um, kind of a boring one here. Bottom of the fourth, Nolan Gorman hit a solo home run to make it one nothing. Victor Scott would, hit an RB, would sacrifice fly to make it 2 nothing, And Brandon Donovan would hit a RBI grounded to make it 3 nothing. St. Louis. And that is where the game would end. So only uh, the Phillies had more hits than the Cardinals, but would score no runs. So kind of a boring one here. The Phillies had Zach Wheeler on the mound, who was absolutely phenomenal. Seven innings pitch, six hits, only three on, three on runs. And they were kind of all, they weren't really earned by hard hits, except for the home runs. So... Yeah, a really nice strong start by him, especially against an offense like the Cardinals, but his own team would not be able to help him. You know, um, As they say, you can leave the Mets, but you can't escape the Mets. That seems like a, a Mets kind of thing to do, and even though he's on the Phillies now. Of course, he was on the Mets, so you know that, that trail of being on the Mets is following him. For the Cardinals, they had Sonny Gray in the mound, who was really, really great. Five innings pitch, five hits, no one runs, five strikeouts, so a really nice start by him. His first start as a Cardinal course only pitch five innings coming back from injury so it's you know wasn't the best but at the same time you're building him up and so was a really nice start coming off that injury he did have so I'd definitely be excited about his season so far if I was a Cardinals fan and seeing what he does next I think he's such a big part of this rotation he's clearly the best pitcher so yeah definitely excited if I was a Cardinals fan for that next game we have is a NL West matchup Diamondbacks Rockies Corbin Carroll would hit a solo home run his first of the year finally took him a little while to get that but he did end up getting it to make it one nothing in the top of the first christian walker would hit a rbi single to make it two nothing arizona and the rockets start to come back a little bit in the bottom of the first answering back with a ryan mcmahon rbi ground out to make it two to one Reno Gritchick would hit his first home run as an arizona diamondback against his former team the rockies to make it three to one so nice insurance run there by the by the diamondbacks and the newest diamondback Reno Gritchick. Bottom of the sixth, Elias Diaz would hit an RBI single to score Ezekiel Tovar to make a 3-2. to two. And that is all the runs the Rockies would end up getting. So, uh, yeah, nice nice start. Nice game by the by the Dimebacks here to beat a bad Rockies team. <coughs> Excuse me. We all know they should, but, you know, sometimes you aren't able to. And uh, it's really nice that they were able to capitalize and end up beating them. For the Rockies, they had Cal Quantrill on the mound, who was okay, actually. Going six innings, giving up eight hits and three run runs. No walks and six strikeouts. So not a bad start, especially against an offense like Arizona. I think you come to expect not the best because they are so good. So a nice start by, there by Quantrill. who's definitely hanging on to his LB career by a thread right now. They, Don Max had Merrill Kelly. Six innings pitched, six hits, two on runs, three walks, four strikeouts. Still an, an amazing season so far by Kelly. I still think he's the most underrated player in baseball. A lot of, He should be a household name at this point. A really, really great pitcher that people don't realize how good he is. Really, really a big fan of him. 
for uh, the next game we'll be talking about is going to be Nationals Giants. N Gi Nationals upset the Giants yesterday, so we'll see if they can do the same as well. The day before, I should say, on the uh, yeah on the Tuesday show when we talked about it. For Patrick Bailey, he would open up the scoring for the teams with a sacrifice fly to score Tyro Estrada to make it one nothing. C.J. Abrams would answer back, giving the Nationals a lead with a two-run home run, giving the Nationals the lead two to one. C.J. Abrams with an RBI single to score Jacob Young to make a three to one. So really, really strong game by him. Nick Ahmed would hit a RBI single to score two after a throwing error as well by Lane Thomas to make it three three. Trey Lipscomb would break up the tie, hitting a sacrifice fly. Did not mean for that to rhyme. To make it four to three, Washington. And Riley Adams would hit a RBI double to make it five three, Washington, getting some more insurance runs on the board. And that is all he would. That was all it for the Giants, and that would end up being five to three for Washington. So another strong game by Washington here to beat a good Giants team. We we'll talk about them later in the show, so we're not going to go too in depth. But really nice job, Joan Adon, who. Uh, Started the game on four innings pitched, three hits, one earned run, more walks and strikeouts. But for four innings against a really solid Giants lineup, I'd take that. So I think Nationals fans will be fine with that start. For the Giants, they had Kyle Harrison going, who went six innings, giving up six hits, three earned runs, no walks, eight strikeouts. An okay start to the season by him, a 4 7 6 ERA. Not the best, but definitely not the worst. Um, next, we are going to be talking about the final game on the NL slate. Cubs and Padres. We open up the scoring on the top of the fifth here with a Jan Gomes solo home run. And then in the same inning, Chris Morrell with the big blow, a grand slam, his third home run of the season, 5 nothing Cubs, just like that after a close game all, all game. Egui Rosario would hit a solo home run, his second of the season, make it 5-1, to one, but they would not come back, and the Cubs would end up winning this game 5-1. to one. Padres on the mound had Joe Musgrove, who was not great on the third anniversary of his no-hitter in Texas. Four innings pitched, five hits, four in runs, three walks, five strikeouts, and a home run allowed. ERA yeah, almost up to seven right now. If the Padres want to be good this season and compete, they need their stars to perform like it. They need their great pitchers to perform like it, and they're just not doing that right now. For the Cubs, they had Ben Brown on the mound, who went four and two-thirds, giving them three hits, no one run, one walk, and five strikeouts. So... De definitely not a horrible start, but not the best either. I mean, only four and two-thirds. No one runs is nice, but I think you would like him to go deeper in the games, especially if they just called him up and he and he's trying to be a bigger part of your rotation. So, yeah, um, that is the end of the second segment, talking about the recapping of the NL games from yesterday. We're going to our third segment here, which is going to be talking about Jackson Holiday being called up, the number one prospect in baseball, being finally being called up by the Orioles. We'll be talking about that, my personal thoughts on it, and just kind of the effects of it for the Orioles and around the league. So, yeah, uh, we'll see you after the break, and uh, thanks. Bye. Looking for your daily fix 